Kendra, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Do you have a moment to talk? Of course, I'm all yours. Do you have any plans for the weekend? No, not really. Why do you ask? I got a call from my father this morning. He said he heard I got engaged and invited the two of us to our annual family reunion. I was wondering if you'd like to accompany me. Your father? Are you sure that was him? Didn't you say you hadn't seen your parents for almost a decade? That's right, but it seems like they are finally making an attempt to mend our relationship. Perhaps I can even find out the real reason they sent me away in the first place. I see what this is. You want me to use my superb detective skills to shed light on the mystery that's been plaguing you for years. I am only trying to reconcile with them. But it would be nice to get them to confess what actually soured our relationship overnight. Who would ever accuse their own flesh and blood of being a thief with no evidence whatsoever? They must be hiding the real reason they kicked me out of the house. I feel angry just thinking about it. Are you sure you want to try and reconcile? If I were you, I wouldn't be so forgiving. It may be hard to forgive them, but I still want to give them a chance to apologize. Seems like you've made up your mind about going. I have. And you'd like me to come with you? Well, yes. You don't have to, of course. I know it's a long flight, and most people probably wouldn't wish to meet their future in-laws in these circumstances. They live in England, right? Right. And you're sure they won't mind me being there? My father insisted that you come along. Besides, I know it's selfish of me, but the thought of going there alone is pretty daunting. Well, if you are sure it's alright, I'd love to go with you. I've always wanted to visit the UK, but my plans always ended up falling through for one reason or another. Is that so? I probably should have offered to visit at least once. No, it's okay. I wouldn't have wanted to stir up any unpleasant memories. I'm happy that we get to go on a mini vacation, but the fact that you can finally get closure makes me feel even happier. Let's hope everything goes smoothly. Oh, I'm not sure it will. My father said they were looking forward to hearing my success story, whatever that means. Is that so? In what exactly are you supposed to have succeeded? Ordinarily, I would have assumed something else, but for my parents, money has always been the single most important measure of success. So they're expecting you to tell them how you make millions of dollars every year as a musician? He said he always assumed I'd change careers when I settled down. I didn't think much of it when we were talking over the phone, but, but now I think he might believe I've had a change of heart and decided to abandon my dream career. Your family's a little strange, isn't it? A little is an understatement. And you still want to confront them face to face? I feel like it'd be easier to do it from a safe distance. You're probably right. I figured if I spoke to them in person, the chances of reconciliation would be much higher. But maybe that's just wishful thinking. Maybe they'll just see me as a failure and turn me away again. Please don't say that. I'm sure they'll welcome you back into the family even without you having acquired great wealth. If they don't, we can always make some eat the rich signs and protest outside their house. What if people take it too seriously and decide to join us? I'm not sure I could ever recover from that in their eyes. Well, if it does happen, we will put down our signs and start yelling, Somebody? Anybody, please, subdue this ravenous mob! As long as we do that from a safe distance. <laughs> Smart thinking. But are they really so rich that people would consider rallying beside us? I know your family is somehow related to some old Scottish royal family member, but that can't mean much nowadays, right? You're absolutely right. That's not at all where their wealth comes from. And of course, there's hardly anything royal about us. Just as I figured. Remember when you accidentally cut your finger making dinner? That's when I realized. There was not a tinge of blue in your blood. I do remember that. You looked horrified when I called you over and ended up staying over for a week monitoring my arms for changes. Because you were using that knife to cut raw meat. I had to make sure you didn't get blood poisoning. I thought that was very thoughtful of you. It's good to have people concerned about your well-being, even as a commoner. Yes, I've been thinking about this, and I've concluded that I shouldn't discriminate against people on the basis of their class. You know, hearing you say that does make me think. Perhaps you are right. I think I'm having an epiphany. I knew you'd get there eventually. Well, thank you for believing in me. I doubt we'll be convincing my parents anytime soon, though. So you aren't going to tell them you're still a musician? Because if you want to lie to them, I have plenty of vague job titles to choose from. 
You do? Of course. Just listen to these. Businessman, entrepreneur, CEO. They're more than enough to please your family members. Just learn how to deflect the questions coming your way and you'll be set for success. As much as I love your suggestions, I doubt my family members will take kindly to being lied to. Well, then make them a reality. Becoming a CEO is a piece of cake. I've been self-appointed as the CEO, CFO, COO, and just about every other executive role, and all I had to do was capitalize on the slime craze of 2018 and ship out a few boxes of slime. I am in awe of your accomplishments. Well, thank you. I couldn't have done it without the support of my first and only four customers. I owe my success to them. I can't believe you abandoned such a lucrative venture. What happened? You, you don't have to say if it's too painful. It is, but you have the right to know the truth. My fourth customer asked me for a refund. It was such a tedious task, I just had to shut everything down. Of course, that's a perfectly reasonable reaction. I knew you'd understand. So what do you think? Would you like to set up a small business? Honestly, after hearing your story, I don't think I'm cut out for the business world. I'll have to do the right thing and tell them the truth. If they ask. If they don't, I'll just stay silent. Sounds like a plan to me. So, we're really going? Looks like it. Just to make sure, your parents won't be willing to postpone the reunion for, let's say, two months, right? I highly doubt that. Is it an inconvenient time for you? No, it's just that I've been eager to get an umbrella ever since the pound started falling, but I really don't want to spend extra money on the overseas shipping costs since it's pretty expensive as it is. I figured if I ordered it now, had it delivered to your parents' house, and went to retrieve it in person in two months, that could help me save some money. An umbrella? I don't recall you ever mentioning that. Why do you have to wait two months to get it? Well, that's because it has to be handcrafted. It costs exactly £1,000 before shipping and taxes. Are you sure you want to spend that much on an umbrella? Also, what umbrella costs $1,200? The one with a silk canopy and engraving. I see. Well, since you're so excited about it, I'll graciously help you cover the shipping costs. Well, that's very generous of you. I mean it. I have to say, I had no idea you had such expensive tastes. Well, now you know. You are marrying a decadent wolf in self-restrained sheep's clothing. There's still time to call off the wedding and run. I'll keep that in mind. Of course. You know, now that I think about it, you probably won't have any problems getting along with my parents. Oh, I'm sure I won't. I studied international relations in Switzerland, remember? I do. Be honest with me, Kendra. Are you an undercover billionaire pretending to be a struggling actress? Ouch. If I were a billionaire, I imagine that struggling wouldn't have hurt this much. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was, was that too harsh? It was, but it's also the truth. So what can you do? You know, I was being serious earlier. I really think you could win my parents over. I'm sure my father would find you delightful. And if you could find out why they ostracized me over the phone, we wouldn't even have to visit them this weekend. But I thought you were trying to reconcile with them. You just want to know what happened that day, don't you? All right, I admit it. It's true, I don't care about the family reunion. I only want to know the reason they suddenly decided they couldn't stand the sight of me. I knew it. So you want me to get your father to confess by acting sweet? Perhaps sweet isn't the right word. You might be better off acting bitter and resentful. All right, I promise I'll try my best. But you have to make a list of everything you know about your father and send them to me so that I can adjust my approach accordingly. Focus on his likes and dislikes. All right, I can do that. Oh, and one more thing. Could you hide the fact that we live in NYC? Or at least pretend we hate it here? Ever since our vacation home got burglarized, he can't stand the city. Got it. Thank you for doing this. I truly appreciate your help. My pleasure. I'm sure it will be good acting practice. Good luck. Good morning, Mr. Short. This is Kendra, Edward's fiance. I wanted to introduce myself before we met in person. Do you have a moment to talk? Kendra. Kendra and Edward. Edward and Kendra. Whichever way I look at it, your names seem rather mismatched. Wouldn't you agree? Would you like me to change my name? I beg your pardon? It's a simple and completely legal procedure. Perhaps you could mail me a list of names you approve of and I could pick one out. You must be joking. I can assure you I'm being serious. 
Are you ready to deal with the repercussions of your reckless statements? What would you do if you really did receive the list? If your son's name is any indication of your name-picking abilities, I'm willing to give your suggestions a chance. Wealth, fortune, prosperity? What an auspicious name! Ah, well, looking back at it now, it seems bitterly ironic, doesn't it? What did your parents wish upon you, Kendra? Knowledge, or so I've been told. Wealth and knowledge. I must admit I like the sound of that pairing. So I have your permission to keep my name unchanged after all? You have an odd sense of humor. It's an acquired taste. Also, I'm not joking. Yes, you may keep your name. I'm sure Edward could use some wisdom in his life. Perhaps you could help him see how misguided he is. He must be miserable, missing his old lavish lifestyle. Well, he brought this on himself. Oh, he is far from being miserable. I'm sure you know as well as we do that material wealth can't buy happiness. I always assumed there was a positive correlation between the sincerity with which that statement was echoed and the amount of money in one's bank account. Tell me, Kendra, just how sincere are you being right now? What a roundabout way of inquiring about my net worth. All I can say is that I live in a lovely, spacious apartment in the most expensive city in the world. Edward told me you lived in Lausanne for most of your life. What prompted you to move to New York? I wanted to move here for work. That's right, I heard you were an actress. Could you guide me through your filmography? Filmography? Do you mean my stage performances? You are a theater actress? Well, I suppose I'm more of a musical performer. Is that so? I'm happy to hear that. I'm quite fond of musicals. Are you really? What a pleasant surprise! I am. So, both you and Edward live in NYC? Yes, we do. Do you rent or own? Neither. We're actually living with my parents. You got engaged while living at your parents' apartment? That can't be right. Well, we didn't have any other choice. That's all we could afford. It seemed safer this way, too. I see things haven't changed much since we left. Did you used to live here? We used to own a lovely vacation home. We would visit it intermittently throughout the year. That's right, I remember Edward mentioning that in passing. So, you no longer own it? No, we sold it right after the second burglary. You were burglarized twice? I can't say that I'm surprised. I hate to say this, but sometimes I find it hard to feel safe in this city. I mean, I have to lock my umbrella in a safe after each use. Isn't that ludicrous? I'm an honest, law-abiding taxpayer. I even declare the income I find under the couch. Shouldn't they be trying a bit harder for people like us? Uh, sorry. I got a bit too riled up. Oh, no. I understand how you feel. There's nothing I hate more than those greedy vultures. If they're desperate for money, it's their own fault. To think my own son stooped to their level. Pardon me? Oh, please disregard that. I can't possibly do that! Please, try to understand that if Edward's hiding something from me, I'd like to know it before we're officially married. I understand, but I'm not sure I want to be the reason you break off your engagement. It's that serious? Yes, unfortunately, it is. My son has done something awful. Could you please elaborate on that? I'm starting to get worried. Alright, I will tell you on one condition. What is it? I'd like you to send me a picture of your engagement ring. What? Why? Please, just do it. I'll explain everything after that. <laughs> what is this? It's my engagement ring. It's a ring pop. I know, isn't that sweet? Neither of us really wears or cares about jewelry. After he proposed, we decided to buy two ring pops to commemorate our engagement. They were delicious. I have no words. I still don't understand what my ring has to do with whatever Edward has done to incur your wrath. You promised you'd explain it after you saw the photo. Fine, a promise is a promise. It happened during our family reunion ten years ago. Back then it was a two-day celebration. After everyone had gone to sleep, my son stole his grandmother's heirloom engagement ring. It was foolish of me to believe he'd have given it to his fiance. No, that can't be right. Edward would never do something like that. I saw him with my own two eyes. He must have thought he was all alone, but I was feeling particularly restless that night and decided to sleep on the sofa. I was half asleep when I saw him enter the room, grab the ring from its display case, and leave. I waited for him to come clean and repent on his own terms, but he acted as though nothing had happened. 
When I finally had to confront him about it, he acted as though I was insane for thinking he stole something. It must be a misunderstanding. Your son goes out of his way to return the money he finds on the ground to its owners. There's no way he'd steal from his parents. I don't know if it's naivete or willful ignorance that's preventing you from seeing him for who he truly is, but I'll neither forget nor forgive him for this. But you invited him to the reunion. Did you really only invite us to check whether or not his fiance would be wearing the ring? Well, we didn't think you'd be wearing it per se, but we figured if he hadn't told you that it was stolen, we could get you to recognize the picture and confess. I thought you were a reasonable person. I guess I was wrong about you. What are you saying? Even if he had stolen it, don't you think he'd have pawned it long ago? You didn't have to give him false hope. We reported the ring stolen. We did all we could to find it. If he pawned it, he'd have pawned it in the U.S. Should I feel sorry for giving him false hope of reclaiming his inheritance? He should be grateful we didn't report him to the police. His inheritance? So this is why you cut him out of your will? You did it over something you may or may not have seen when you were half asleep? I've got the information I need. Please let him know he no longer needs to attend the reunion. Goodbye. Unbelievable. So, are you absolutely certain you didn't take it? Of course you believe me, don't you, Kendra? Of course I do. I'm just confused. Could he have made the whole thing up? Well, we really did lose the ring. And he did report it to the police. But I swear I had nothing to do with it. I was fast asleep in my room all night. Please, don't take this the wrong way, but could you try and recount the events of that day? Perhaps we can figure out what's going on. I suppose I could write down everything I remember. Although I'm not even sure it matters anymore. It could come in handy if you ever need to prove that you were wrongly disinherited. I don't know. At this point, I don't think I'd take the money even if they pleaded with me to do so. You can do as you wish, Edward. But I still believe if there's anyone who deserves to get that money, it's you. I'm not saying that just because we are getting married. Our funds will remain separate as we've agreed. I only want you to clear your name and get what's rightfully yours. I'm not accusing you of wanting to marry me for my potential inheritance, Kendra. We've been through thick and thin together for seven years. I just don't see a point in going after my parents' money against their wishes. But you do want to prove your innocence, right? I suppose that'd be nice. Well then, let's do this together. Let's get to the bottom of this. Alright, I'll start writing down whatever I can remember. Yes, please do that. Huh, the name of the sleeping aid your father was given is awfully familiar. I heard its side effects are pretty extreme. They are. But my cousin had been taking it for quite some time. Besides, he only gave him one pill to help him fall asleep. Could it have affected him that quickly? I'm not sure. What if your father wasn't the one who was affected? Would you say you and your cousin are similar in stature? We are, but that's hardly any proof. I'm sure your father will investigate the claim himself. All we have to do is alert him to the possibility. I suppose we could do that. That's the spirit! We will exonerate you in no time! In the end, the heirloom ring was located in between the floorboards in the guest bedroom Edward's cousin was staying in. It was covered in dirt and missing a few diamonds. His cousin apologized profusely. He swears he has no idea how the ring got under his bed. My husband has yet to accept his parents' apology, but I'm sure he'll come around eventually. After all, money may not be able to buy us happiness, but it will help us buy the lovely townhouse we've been eyeing. Oh my god! Today's meal is particularly awful. I can't believe you tried to make me eat something that tastes like dog food. What kind of harassment is this? Dog food? Are you talking about the meal I made for you this morning? Exactly! I had no choice but to choke it down. Don't make me eat that disgusting food again. You've been married to Jake for two years, and... You've been living with me for three months already, right? 
When are you going to learn to cook something decent? I've been giving you cooking tips every day. Why don't you show some improvement? You always complain when I cook frozen food. I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to make sure you have breakfast and lunch ready. And now you're saying it's like feeding you dog food? If you dislike my cooking that much, why don't you cook for yourself? I have a full-time job and I'm doing my best to juggle work and household responsibilities. Since you don't have a job, why not handle your meals? What are you implying? Taking care of your mother-in-law is also part of being a wife. I feel sorry for my son who has to eat your awful cooking every day. For your sake, I suggested living together so I could teach you how to cook. And my husband enjoys what you call dog food. I've been making Jake's lunch alongside your breakfast. Essentially, he's eating the same meals. Jake has never complained about the food. The only one who seems to have an issue is you. He's just being nice to you. He's lying to spare your feelings, you know. Can't you even realize that? I don't think so. Besides, you end up eating everything anyway, right? What? Well, my lunch break is almost over. I have to go now. What do you mean you have to go? We are not done talking. I'm at the office, Victoria. I'm sorry, but I have to go back to work. Hey! We are talking about an important thing. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Looks like I'll have to teach you a proper lesson. You did it, didn't you? All the stew I just made is spilled in the sink. Why did you do that? Yes, I threw it away. I knew it. What were you thinking? I tasted it while you were in the bathroom. It was awful, completely inedible. It tasted like it was rotten. It could have caused food poisoning. That's why I had to throw it away. My son could get hospitalized eating that food. I bought the ingredients after work today. There's no way they could have gone bad. And please, don't waste food like this. If you don't like my cooking, you don't have to eat it. You didn't have to throw it away like that. Oh, really? I wondered why it tasted like that. Now because of you, there's nothing edible left in this house. I'm going out to eat with my friends tonight. What? I don't want to get sick from eating your cooking. Since I have to eat out because of you, you'll be paying for it. I'll charge you later. Why do I have to pay for it? I don't get it. Don't you ever talk back to me. I refuse to eat such dog food level stew. Well, you've learned your lesson now. Make sure you cook a decent meal next time. Hi, honey. I just finished work. I'm heading home now. You cooked my favorite stew today, right? I'm sorry I had to work overtime today. I'm so hungry. I can't wait to be home. And eat the best stew in the world. Well... Your mother threw it away. What? She threw it away while I was in the bathroom. She proudly told me about it when I asked her. What the hell? I can't believe she did that. She said 
It tasted rotten. That's why she decided to throw it away. No way that's true. You would never cook food like that. The packed lunches you make for me every day are really good too. <sighs> Thank you, honey. So there's no food that I can serve you right away. I see. I'm sorry about my mom. It was a mistake that we agreed to live with her. I thought she needed to be with us after my father left her. I feel bad that you have to wake up early every day to cook. But if I try to talk to her, she just gets even more stubborn. I'm really sorry. You don't need to apologize. I love cooking for you. I'm sorry. I know you were excited about the stew. If I noticed sooner what she was planning to do, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Looks like your mother went out to eat, so I'll cook again. Oh, honey, you don't have to do that. How about we go out to eat, too? Are you sure? Yeah, why not? It's a long weekend, too, so how about we grab some drinks? <laughs> that sounds good. Actually, there are things I want to talk about without your mother around. All right. I will get back home in 30 minutes. You should get ready soon. All right. Take care, honey. See ya. Let's enjoy tonight. I'm here to hear whatever you want to share, honey. See ya. Hey, Alex. Where are you now? Why aren't you home? Who's going to take care of the house? This is unforgivable. You should know your position. If you have time to hang out outside, put effort into improving your cooking skills. I can't believe you went out overnight without preparing meals for me. You're a failure as a wife. When you get back, I have to lecture you very well. I won't stop until you apologize sincerely. Be prepared. Alex? When are you going to come back? This is unacceptable. Since there was no food in the house, I had no choice but to eat out. When you come back, I'll charge you the full cost of the meal that I paid. And that's not all. Because you're not here, the laundry and cleaning have piled up. You've abandoned your job as a wife. You're the worst. I can't take this anymore. Jake should consider divorcing a wife like you. Be prepared. Alex! So you finally came back. You were out with Jake during this long weekend? Yes, that's right. Do you have any problem? Yes, I do. Well, it's good that it wasn't an affair. But you neglected your important role of cooking for your mother-in-law and went on a trip. It's unforgivable. So a wife isn't allowed to go on trips with her husband? Why is everything I do wrong to you? Shut up! If you're back home now, prepare the meal, clean, and do laundry. Do it quickly! And pay me back the money that I spent on food while you were away. Oh, God. Hey! Why didn't you cook for me? Even though it's bad, I always eat your terrible food. I won't cook for you anymore because you'll throw it away. What? You just want to make a complaint for no reason. It's unacceptable that you always waste food. 
Why do I have to cook for a person who just throws food? That's why I'm telling you to cook good food, aren't I? You're the one wasting ingredients. A cheeky wife like you deserves a divorce. Even Jake must be sick of such terrible food. I'm so ashamed that you're the wife of my son. I'll talk to Jake and kick you out of this house. Oh, really? Then do you know where Jake is right now? What are you talking about? He's at home. Hold on. What's going on? Mom? Jake! Where did you go? Oh, I see. Your wife made another terrible food, so you went out to buy food for us, right? Oh, you're such a good son. Alex makes terrible food? Yeah. You know what? She didn't prepare a meal for me. She has no respect. You've seen it too, right? She's really bad at cooking. She makes food that only a dog would eat. On top of that, she's always very rude to me. You know what she said to me earlier? She said she won't cook for you anymore? Oh, you already know. Well, I'm with Alex right now. Huh? I'm at Alex's parents' place. Why? We spent our long weekend here. Alex and her family cooked food for me, and it was really good. Oh, Lord. Are you okay? I can't believe she's making you eat that disgusting food. You should come back. That's enough. Mom, you've been relying on Alex's cooking skills since you married Dad. Huh? I've been wondering when you would realize that we already know it. Wait, uh, what are you saying? What do you mean I was relying on Alex? You got married to Alex two years ago. We started living together just two months ago. It doesn't make any sense. You really haven't noticed? What are you talking about? You just buy food at the deli and pretend that you cook it, don't you? What? No. Why would I do that? That deli is run by Alex's family. What? By the way, Alex also works there in the kitchen. No way. That's ridiculous. She must be lying. I've never seen her working there. That's because she works in the kitchen. Listen, Mom. You've been lying to us for 20 years, serving us the food that Alex cooked. You're telling me Alex is bad at cooking? Aren't you the one who now knows that that's not true? Oh, no. I mean... It's all a misunderstanding. What kind of misunderstanding is there? I didn't know Alex worked at that deli. Whether you knew or not, the fact remains that you wasted food and harassed my wife. You were saying Alex's cooking is bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, you proudly served dishes from Alex's family deli on our table. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You know what? Including me, Alex, and her family, we all hate people who waste food. Listen to me, Jake. You can't stay with us anymore. What? It's only been two months since we started living together. It's too sudden. How can we keep living together when you harass my wife like this. I won't do that anymore, I promise. I don't trust you. 
Why not? You've been lying to us for 20 years. It's hard to trust someone who's been lying that long. I won't lie anymore. Promise. No matter what you say, I won't change my mind. I've already terminated the lease for that apartment at the end of this month. What? Really? Why do you have to go this far? I know if I don't, you won't leave us alone. We used this long weekend to look for a new place. And we were lucky to find one quickly. Then I'll come live with you in the new place. Mom, please. I can't do this anymore. You're leaving me? The one who was divorced because of your father's infidelity? How could you do this to me? Of course. Dad was wrong to cheat. And I'm not on his side at all. I mean, it's rather ironic that he left because he fell in love with a woman who's good at cooking. What? Dad never said anything, but... He knew that you were lying to us for a long time. Oh no, really? I did feel somewhat sorry for you being left alone after being cheated on. So when you wanted to live together, I accepted, didn't I? But then, you started harassing Alex. You never did any housework. Plus, I can't believe you asked Alex to pay you for your food. It's just too much, Mom. I'm done with you. Please, reflect on your actions, Mom. Pack up your things, and please leave as soon as possible. If you don't move out by the end of this month, I'll have to forcibly kick you out. Jake! Goodbye, Mom. The next day, Victoria stormed into our deli and caused a scene. But we knew she would come in, so we promptly called the police. She wasn't arrested, but she seemed frightened when the police arrived. After that, somehow she realized her mistake and left the apartment quietly. Jake and I relocated and started a new life. Living without her, I gradually felt the stress melting away. My constant headaches vanished, and life became much more comfortable. <laughs>